Okay. Hi, welcome to Into ETV. I'm Peggy Robinson. Today's guest is Loretta Taylor, and she has her own YouTube channel called Loretta Sharing Group. And today she's going to tell us about her spiritual experience. So hi, Loretta. Hi, Peggy. Thank you so much. I'm just like, I'm literally beside myself that um, that you've allowed me to come on the show. I am elated. I love your show. Um, I love what you do for the collective. So thank you so much for having me. Um, well, you're I'm going to start I'm going to start out and, uh, you know, first of all, I, I want to make it clear to your viewers that I've not had an NDE. Uh, I'm just going to take you all through my personal spiritual awakening and how that process started. So um, I have three children with my ex-husband uh, and soon after the marriage, I knew I had made a mistake. Uh, so we divorced. I divorced after three years of marriage. And I just wanted out of the marriage. It was one of those situations when it's like, you know what? You take your stuff. I take my stuff. All of the little details. Don't worry about it. I just want out of this. Um, and though on paper, it stated that we shared custody, I ended up with the kids full time. He might would get them maybe every now and again on the weekends, but he actually moved right out of the state immediately after the divorce. So I literally was taking care of the kids by myself and my family is in the South. I live in New Jersey. Uh, and so, and it was, so it's just me and the kids and, um, I, I managed the best way I could, but eventually I had a friend who was like, Loretta, you have to put this guy on child support. And I did not want to because I knew it would come at a cost. I did not want to, but eventually I had to, um, I had to, to say, you know what, I have to do this. And so I reluctantly filed and so began and an incredibly tumultuous custody battle. Uh, constant back and forth, tons of attorney's fees piling up. Um, as soon as we would resolve one issue with a court judgment, he would file another motion. And I don't know if, you know, a lot of your audience is familiar with the court system, but every time, especially in child custody issues, every time someone files a motion, you have to respond. And it's probably more expensive now, but it was like $3,000, three to $5,000 per motion to have your attorney respond to it. So it was incredibly expensive. Uh, and, and, and I mean, just every big or small issue. It could be where are the kids going to school? Uh, what what county are they going to go to school in? To who's ready to wear braces? I mean, no matter what issue it, it is, he wanted to go through the courts and it was financial abuse yeah. uh, to, to be frank about it. It was financial abuse to just continue to use the courts to harass me. So the um, the bills piled up, the custody battle uh, started to cost tens of thousands of dollars. I attempted numerous times to just say, you know what, let's, let's work this out between us. Why are we spending all this money to attorneys and it could go to our kids? I just tried to appeal um, to his higher self so many times, but I realized that his goal was not to win, quote unquote. His goal was the battle. His goal was the fight. And so once I realized that and I saw the debt mounting, I started to feel pretty helpless. 
And I became uh, severely depressed. Every day began to look the same. Um, I would wake up with a sense of dread. Uh, he had uh, uh, mentally just manipulated one of our children to where she just started to really hate me. He was perfect and I was the devil because I would not talk about him to her. It seemed as if I was the bad guy. Uh, so he crossed every line and every boundary. And, um, and, and so I, you know, I just, I just was in, in this severe depression and it just, the thoughts began to build momentum. You know, it started out as, you know what, God, I'm not having fun here anymore. This is not fun. I don't want to be here, you know? And, and as the days continued, the thoughts began to build on one another. And no one wakes up and thinks, boy, it would be fun for me to die. Uh, but as we know, suicidal thoughts gradually grow over time. Most people who have contemplated suicide are in unbearable pain. And it is not that they want to die. They just want to live. They actually want to live. And um, so I started to imagine, right, how I would do it. How could I do it with the least amount of pain? Um, okay, well, I'll do it maybe when the kids are with dad. So they're safe. Uh, I even started thinking about the music that I would have playing because there was a specific song. When I started to go into that mental process, there was a song that kind of led me in that vibration. Uh, and that is when I began to recognize and understand that music has impact. It can either be high in vibration or low in vibration. And this particular artist whom I won't name is very popular. But her song always just lulled me into that place where it's like, you know, okay, I'm going to do this. Um, and I know there may be people who are thinking, wow, she had three kids and she was contemplating killing herself. But I don't know if if, if folks realize if you're hearing every day that you are worthless and you're hearing every day that your kids will be better off without you, eventually, eventually you may start to believe it. And so I start to be convinced that, you know what, this is, I'm no good to anyone. Why am I here? Um, I'm not, I'm not, again, I'm not having fun. This is, this is incredibly painful. Um, and so that that momentum uh, continued to build. And uh, so what I wanted to do was right now is I wanted to talk about how our thoughts are incredibly creative. We are creative beings. We create whether we know it or, we, or whether we don't. We either create a happy dream or we create a nightmare, but everyone is a creator. And we have three levels of creation available to us. The first level of creation is our thoughts. Our thoughts are, pri are, are powerful. Most people think that our thoughts are private. They're not. They're not, they are powerful. And so the, that first level of creation is our thoughts. And if we do not recognize that a thought does not serve us and start to stop that momentum, then it can eventually lead us to harm ourselves or, or others. So that first level of creation began to build. And then the second level of creation that we have available to us is our speech. 
and, the, and speech is a more powerful level of creation than the thoughts. And so if I speak something, that's why if sometimes among friends, if somebody says something, the uh, their friend may say, girl, don't say that. Don't speak that in the universe. Because on a very innate level, they understand the power of speech. And then the, the final level of creation is our actions. Uh, once you've gotten to the point where you are doing an action, that thought and that speech, you it's already, you're meant, it's in a stage of manifestation. So I wanted to talk about that because as in my situation, I really got to a point where I, you know, I had began to, to plan it and had began to start to implement this. Um, and so as my preoccupation with death continued, I began to look up near-death experiences and I had no idea why. I just started to search them up. I even remember in my mind asking, why are you doing this? Like, why are we doing this? I would look at it at work. I would look at it at home. I would look at it while I was, I would listen to them while I was driving. I would listen to them before bed. I would listen to them first thing in the morning. And it just got to a point where uh, it was the only thing that I could tolerate. It was the only thing that I could do that I didn't have to do. There are things that you have to do, right? You get up, get dressed, you get the kids together, you go to work. Those are the things that you have to do. But it was the only thing that I could do that I could tolerate. Um, and um, and so I, uh, again, I just continued to, to listen to these near-death experience stories and I can't say that I experienced joy while I listened to them because I was not yet in the vibration to experience that, but they were doing something for me, right? They were connecting with me on some level. So I continued to search the NDE. Uh, and this was the time before YouTubers like you and I, Peggy, this was before there was a Loretta or Peggy to uh, have all of the YouTubers on their show. So I had to seek everyone out. And so it was a search on YouTube every day uh, to listen to a new one every day. Until finally one day, I found a video of a woman who had committed suicide and was revived. And she very matter-of-factly asserted that we all reincarnate over and over again with our soul family and that we play different roles in each incarnation to achieve a certain lesson. And when I heard this, I physically, like that, I had a visceral reaction. It was like, <gasps> It was like I could finally take a breath. I knew I have arrived. This is what I have been looking for. This is what religion just couldn't give me. It was, I felt it in my soul. And she continued to talk about that we, you know, life is, is really a, a game. We really come here. We're powerful beings and we have these experiences that the soul wants to have. And we it's in an, this this engagement of love with one another. And um and so after that I just began to consume as much information as I could get to. I began to read uh, sourced books such as Conversations with God, 
by Neil Donald Walsh. I read Your Soul's Gift and Your Soul's Plan, which I love, uh, by Robert Schwartz. Powerful books, uh, Eckhart Tolle's books, and just a plethora of like life after life books and, uh, you know, hypnotherapy books and and I even discovered a woman whom I've been following for years by the name of Tina Louise Spaulding, who channels Jesus. And I began to read her books and they would always reference A Course in Miracles. And so eventually I'm like, I keep reading about this book, A Course in Miracles. I got to get this book. And so I, I began to consume that as well. Uh, but after reading your Soul's Plan and Your Soul's Gift by Robert Schwartz. I got into this space because I, if, for those of your viewers who've read it, you know that he really goes into the pre-birth planning arena. And he deals with certain so many issues in the books, like, you know, if somebody was born blind or uh, you know, if somebody had a tragic accident and was handicapped for the rest of their life or uh, a drug drug addiction, he addressed so many different uh, issues. And I just was like, I wonder what my pre-birth planning was with my ex. Like I literally had to figure out what what I literally thought that I had kidnapped him and like murdered him in a past life. <laughs> I thought that I just, what did I do to this man? Like he's getting his paybacks so now. <laughs> yes. So I was like, what did I do as a soul in a previous lifetime to this guy? So in the books, um, there was a psychic by the name of Stacy Wells. She wasn't cheap, but I had to know why. I needed to know why. And so I met with her, uh, of course, via Zoom. And she explained to me that, no, you hadn't done anything wrong. Uh, that uh, She saw us in a previous lifetime. Both of us worked in the area of healing. We were doctors. And I was a colleague of his. And we lived in Germany. And he was from another country. He was a foreigner. And so his co-workers, our colleagues, did not respect his work because he was not, because uh, he was a foreigner to, to our country. And I had this compassion for him. And I felt just so bad for him. And so she told me that he actually he asked me uh, if I could be a a support for him in this lifetime, we actually had no romantic engagement in that lifetime. This is the first lifetime that we were actually together, and but that I told him, I will do that, but for a little while, but for a little while, and in exchange, you give me my three beautiful children. And so we made this agreement and his need for growth matched my need for growth. And that on a soul level, I knew that we would do this dance. I knew that he would be this energy. Um, and of course, at the time I'm like, oh, I'm like, as a soul, we agree to these things. And it's like, you know, we're in this space of love and light and beauty and God and all this. And we agree, sign on to all this stuff. And I'm like, why did I do that? You know, but um, it really did reshape my perception of my life. It reshaped my perception of who I am. I no longer was the victim, you know, I was, I was the orchestrator of my life. We were in a play and I had assigned him a role. The kids had their role and we were going to do this, this thing. And, and, and she said that he actually sacrificed this lifetime 
to be that dark energy to push me in the space of healing so that I can be a blessing for myself and others. And so uh, not only did, you know, did I forgive him, but eventually I was in a space where I was just, I was grateful, you know, um, that he was willing and he plays the role very well. Okay. Uh, but that he was willing to do that, to put me in this space, because sometimes a lot of times it is through experience, it's through pain, it's through suffering and getting, going through that suffering that we develop the wisdom and compassion uh, to, to step into our power. And so just because I woke up to who I am, doesn't mean he stopped foul emotions. He kept right on foul emotions. He kept right on doing the things that he did, but he no longer had control of my emotions. I was able to see the content and have perspective and understand that I am a daughter of God just like he was a, a son of God. And, it, and when they say perception is reality, it really is. I mean, if I think I'm a victim, then I'll create a victimhood. But if I think that I am a powerful being that has chosen to be here, that life is not happening to me, but that life is happening for me and that I'm engaging with my spirit guides and my spirit team to put me myself in a space, it becomes a, a completely different experience. It doesn't mean that you don't suffer anymore, but there's always that that higher perspective and there's always that degree of gratitude, no matter what you're going through. And so uh, I wanted to say it's important for me to emphasize that it was the near-death experience, Peggy, that enabled me to pivot from one way of thinking where I'm going to death and destruction because I had planned that suicide out uh, to where I was able to pivot and think another way. And so I just wanted to say it is the it is the my belief that it is the near death experience uh, that is significant to the evolution of humanity. Uh, the beauty of the near death experience is that it cuts right through the silos of religion. It releases us from the grip of fear of death. So many in the ear say, "I'm no longer afraid of death." Um, from the heaviness of believing that they will never see their loved ones again. Uh, these, you know, these experiencers, when they, when, they, when they cross over and they come back and they talk about this love, they talk about this energy, they talk about this power, uh, it allows us to get out of the conditioning of smallness that we have all been exposed to. And that's why I love A Course in Miracles. A Course in Miracles was written about 50 years ago for this time right now, I've heard Jesus say through a channel. It's a way for us to take our minds back from the vibration of fear to the vibration of love. We have been programmed, y'all. We have been programmed since birth. And birth the family life, right? Program us. Children are to be seen and not heard. Sit down and be quiet. Don't ask any questions. If we see psychic phenomena, if we see angels, if we have experience, what's the first thing we hear from our parents? That didn't happen. You just imagine that. And so we that part of us is shut down from birth. And then continues 
that 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 programming and the school system. I love teachers. My mom is a teacher, but I know that in the school system, that pro that heavy programming continues. Uh, I have two teenagers, and my daughter told me, "Mom, you know, if somebody's late to class, their teacher, our teacher, makes them write on the board how late they are, no matter why." So what is that? That's shame, you know, that's shame, that's humiliation, um, that's continued programming of smallness. And so, and then what the school system doesn't do, religion does, not all religion, but, you know, I know for me, I grew up hearing uh, that I'm born in sin. And I just remember thinking, Dang, you know, I I messed up before I even started, you know, and not only that, but I'm responsible for the murder of, of a man that I that I don't that I've never met. There's so much smallness, so much guilt uh, that we grow up in and it shapes our world. It shapes how we create. And so, again, um, when we hear these in the ears, they come back and it's like, no, I mean. You know, some people say I, I was homosexual, but I, you know, I didn't go to hell. God loved me or whatever, what, whatever we have in our heads to say, you know, these people are going to go to hell. And um, so I just, I, you know, I just want to impart to everybody that uh, that's why I do the near-death experiences on my channel. I have a channel. Uh, Loretta Sharon Group, and I interview in the ears, and 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 that's why it's such a part of my story. It's such a part of my own journey, and um, and I love it. I really do. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to share. Um, it's funny that Robert Schwartz's books helped you and resonated with you, and brought you out of that depression, it sounds like. Whereas for me, I never read his books, but the first time I saw him in a video being interviewed by a someone who interviews near-death experiencers, oh, heck broke loose. Because it went against what he was saying, went against everything. And, and mm -hmm. the only part I had issue was, was one thing, and they were using NDEs to promote abortion because he was bringing up mm. the rebirth plan. He's saying that the babies decided with their guides before coming to the earth plane that they wanted to be aborted and reincarnated later. And the brakes went on for me. I was like, whoa, wait, what's happening here? And so a discussion started, because I was in leadership at IONS by then, already starting to do ISGO. I had my own you know, um, groups here local. And so Ian said, you got a problem with this. You got a choice to make Ian's or pro-life. And that was because of the Robert Schwartz interview I had seen. And uh, of course, wow. I'm, you know, for me, you know, well, I don't want in this organization if you're going to use NDEs to promote abortion because they knew I was Catholic. They knew my NDEs were Christian based. Mm -hmm. And so it went against me. And I said, so everybody's not welcome, are they? You know, don't promote mm -hmm. that you are all inclusive to everyone's beliefs if you're going to give me an ultimatum that I can't mm -hmm. be this and be in leadership, mm -hmm. even though nobody had complained and said that I said anything about this subject. or And in fact, my group here in Southeast Ohio, they were all pro-life, you know, because and so mm -hmm. <laughs> who was I hurting, right? But so that's funny that 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 meant a lot and helped you, whereas it, it had the opposite effect on me. Yeah, I, I always encourage people to follow your guidance. You know what I'm saying? Some in the years die and go to hell. Uh, but I it is my belief system that they because we are creative beings that they sent themselves there. And it's only for a little while, right? It's, it's only until they realize, wow, wait a minute. It's me that's creating that 
But there'll be there will be some people who will avidly uh disagree with that. Um well, so all, we the, all, all of them had, that went to hell say that you know, once they cried out to Jesus or to God or something, you know, they were pulled up out of that in some way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I just the, the belief system that it was created for us for eternity uh isn't resonant with me, but we all have. You know, we all have things that resonate with us. And I think, again, we're conditioned to think, well, you're wrong and I'm right. Who knows? You know, I've heard from high vibrational beings that we're on this dimension. We're in preschool. <laughs> we're not even in kindergarten. We're in preschool. I mean, there are people who still enact violent acts on people just based on the color of the skin of the body that they decided to live in. You know, when you think about it, it's such a, uh, you know, just immature way of thinking. Um, and so we are still, we're very new in this process. So that's interesting that, you know, that's what you got out of it. But um, yeah, it just was, It you know, what was freeing for me, Peggy, it was just the fact that it showed, the, the whole pre-birth planning topic shows like, you know what, life, you're, you're not a victim. Life didn't just happen to you. Um, and on a certain level, you're going to get out of this you're going to move past this and you're going to become more powerful. And that just in that moment, when I was in so much helplessness, that was all I needed to, to reshape my thought process, you know, but I appreciate what you are doing. I appreciate what other uh, YouTubers are doing because I, I, you know, I think it's important, you know, it's hard to argue against someone's experience. You know, that's their experience. And um, and so that's what I think is just really valuable about it. And it just personally helped me. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm sure it was my higher self that was drawing me to this. It was, you know, was, I'm sure that guardian angels recognize she's about to, she about to offer herself, we got to do something. And so um, it'll always be, you know, we're do we to me, we do, you know, important work in that regard. So yeah. that was your experience, your spiritually transformed mm -hmm. experiences was to yeah. find out about the pre-birth planning and reincarnation and that helped you. Yeah, it helped me uh, just get out of that space. Um it wasn't immediate, you know, um, I just began, again, I began to consume so much material that spoke to the truth of who we are. Uh, it took a while to, to reshape my thoughts, you know, and I encourage anyone who is suffering from suicidal thoughts. Number one, I feel like we need to create more of a space to allow people to talk about you know what, I'm having these thoughts without labeling them and committing them. like, And so that's the fear, right? And that's why people don't talk about it because they're afraid of judgment and, you know, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. We we got to get past that. We have to get past, past that and create the space of understanding and compassion and wisdom. And, uh, but I, I went into the tangent about our thoughts because it is important. It is the thoughts. It is the level of thought that it begins. Everything we see began with a thought from the chairs you and I are sitting on Peggy to the paint colors on the wall. You know, like if you have a, wall color that's great somebody said mm, I want something that's kind of mixed I don't want it to be white I don't want it to be black I want it to be kind of a little bit neutral it started with a thought everything we see started with a thought and so recognizing 
the power of that. And if you do that and you catch it early enough, right, you're able to pivot to another way of thinking um, and and go higher about anything. I I find myself saying in my head about my kids, like, I'm always cleaning up by myself. They never help me. And I had to catch myself, like, the, the more you think that, the more it's going to be demonstrated to you. So think a new thought, you know, and allow space for a different experience. And, you know, we, this stuff is hidden from us, Peggy. Like, I always talk about, I would love it if in the school system, there was a subject about creativity, teaching our children, teaching our ch uh, kindergartners and elementary kids about how to create. You know, how do you create a situation? Are you unhappy? Let me show you how to create a new or even what their emotions mean. You know, a lot of times if we think a thought, so say I think, which, which is what I thought, uh, I'm alone. I'm just alone. Nobody loves me. Uh, nobody needs me. And so I think that, right? And immediately I feel what? Bad. I feel bad. So I, I, we think that we feel bad because what we thought is true. Yeah, you are alone. Nobody needs you. But that's not why we feel bad. Did you know that we feel bad? Because that is feedback from our internal guidance system telling us you're off track. You're wrong, my love. You're never alone. You're never alone. God is always with you. Your spirit guides are always with you. You're, you have angels assigned to you. Every one of us have angels assigned to us. Just because we can't see them doesn't mean that they're not there. And so you get that feedback because that feedback is telling you you're off track of truth. Go back to right thinking. And, but we think we feel bad because it's true. And then, so we think the thought, we have that negative feeling and then it fuels more of that same thought. And then it continues to build this momentum. And so, uh, I'm going to I'm going to tell you there is a lot of information that has been purposely withheld from us because if we all walk around knowing that we are powerful beings that we are sons and daughters of of God truly the true God or source whatever word I know things have been done to people in the name of God and, and names are triggering. So whatever universe, God, source, whatever you're, you're comfortable with, if we all walked around knowing the truth of who we are, who could tell us anything? Who could control us? Who could make us feel small? Nobody. No, we would all be Jesus. We would all step into that space of spiritual awareness. Uh, Jesus was hated by the church. Why? Because he could not be controlled. You couldn't tell Jesus, pay me this money and I'll go to God on your behalf because you're not good enough to go to God, but I'll do it. You know, I don't have anything against the church, but we have to reshape the way. Imagine telling your children, imagine telling your children they were born in sin. How do you raise children who have a high self-perception and high self-esteem and My. know their, their parents? And you're telling them they were born in sin. Yeah. Think about it. Just you know yeah my first you husband know, was catholic and he's in his big catholic family we went to his church all the time and till one day uh they lined up my three little boys they were like five six seven and was lining them up to go into confession 
I was like, no. Well, what do they have to confess? They're not going to go in there and say, forgive me for I've sinned and tell their sins. They, no. They're little kids. You know, you're not going to put this on them. And they were so upset with me, the ladies of the church. I mean, one of them was calling me and saying, how could you do this as a mother to your child? It's like, I'm not doing that to them. Like, this is too right. young. That's right. That's right. Because we really don't, we've been so used to, in the name of tradition, doing things that were told that that's always been done. A lot of times if parents stopped and really thought about what, what does really mentally, what is this doing to my kid to tell my kid that? You know, what is this really doing? If we could just pause and do exactly what you did, Peggy, listen to your internal guidance. You knew this doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel good to put that burden on them. And that's and, why we continue to create like that. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I felt like, you know, when they get older, if they do sin, are they going to believe that they just go to confession and do five Hail Marys and everything's good? I don't want them to think that either. Yeah. So yeah, they they weren't yeah. teaching any relationship with God. Like we started um, Sunday school for the kids and I'm going on my background to Sunday school in the Christian religion. And here it is in a Catholic church. And I'm thinking we're going to sing, you know, teach them Jesus loves me and all these things that I grew up that brought me close in my mm-hmm. faith. And like, oh, we don't do that here. I'm like, you're stopping a relationship with Jesus and sending them to the priest for this absolution. And so it was, it was, that's when it was starting to not fit with me. And you know, if it fits for other people, great, you know, but sometimes things, you know, like you say, you just don't, I don't, it's not what you need. I'm glad you brought that up, Peggy. That's another thing that has been demonized in our society is this this um idea that the word psychic is a curse word um uh you you know they discouraged that word they made it dirty they turned it into something evil because if you're getting if you're communicating directly with god yourself you are not in a place of smallness. You have access to the truth yourself without having to go to these people to to get out of guilt or whatever. Uh, and so we we all have access to information from God, our spirit guides, from our angels. We all have access. We all have this intuition. And some of us grow it and some of us don't, but all of us are born with it and there's nothing evil about it. There's so many things. There's so, there's so much programming. I like, we could talk all day long about it. And so, uh, you know, again, A Course in Miracles, when you read A Course in Miracles in about the middle of the book, uh, there's lessons for you to do every day and it's it's literally Jesus telling you who you are. It, it's a sourced book, which means a woman by the name of Helen Shuckman uh, channeled Jesus and did what we call automatic writing, where he had her because she got to a space where she was like, there has to be a better way. And he had her, uh, you know, dictate this book. If you if you look at the book, there's no way any human just came up with this uh and so but it's a way to take our minds back and it's not the only source not at all that's not what i'm saying again we have all these other books numerous books spirit is trying to assist us in this awakening process there is no limitation of materials to help us get from the space of fear to the space of love uh, we have access to so much material and whatever feels right for you, whatever does it for you. But I, I just was so grateful. I will always be grateful to um, 
the NDE stories uh, to get again to help me pivot from that from that path of destruction, really. To um, and it was a part. It was a part of my, you know, my pre-birth planning to go through this process. But I encourage everyone, if you're struggling with those thoughts, reach out to someone you trust, someone who's compassionate, someone who has been there, you know, uh, and get the help that you need because let's do this God thing, y'all. Let's do this God thing. And the, and the level of darkness, the level of heaviness that you feel that's the level of power and, and light that you're always, that you're going to experience as well. How dark it is for you, that's how powerful you're going to be. That's how powerful you're going to be because you're going to, once you come up out of that, you're going to have that energy of the solution. And did people ex, are going to be drunk. Did your ex finally mm -hmm. leave you alone or what happened there? Finally. Uh, yes. I think old age, she was significantly older than me, old age and, and ran out of resources. Okay. <laughs> uh, for real. And, um, and then he just wasn't great with the kids. They eventually stopped wanting us. It just was a bad, but then I think about his childhood and I'm like, you know, I, you know, I always think about uh, I always hear when you see somebody that is in egoic consciousness, think that this, that is me having a hard time, you know, and then you're able to just have compassion. So uh, he eventually stopped, but I think circumstances made him stop. Um, and, you know, and I, you know, every time I think about him, I do this for my heart, Peggy. Every time I think about him, I send him love and light. Just to keep my heart okay. Because that was days, girl. <laughs> that was days, okay. But um, I'm grateful. There is gratitude. Because who else was going to play that role for me? You know, um, I want to let your viewers know that there's a parable called the the uh son the the son and the little soul or the little soul and the son something like that that donald neil walsh um wrote and it and it talks about this process of when when there's a, a little soul that wanted to experience itself and it was like everything was white and it was white and it was like how do i know where i am if everything else is light and and it went to god and said I want to, I want to know who I am. And God was like, are you sure? And it was like, yeah, yeah. I want to, I want to know that which I am. And God said, well, you know, you're light. And it was like, yeah, but you know, everything else is light. How can I appreciate who I am? And God said, well, I, you know, in order for you to do that, I'm going to have to put you in a, in a darkness because you are not darkness. And the soul said, okay, I want to do that. And then that still wasn't over. The soul had to go to other souls and say, I need somebody to show me how I am compassion. I need somebody to show me how I am forgiveness. And the problem is if everybody is love, if everybody is light, then how will I get this opportunity to forgive? And there were souls that said, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't do that. I love you too much. I can't do that. And finally, it found a soul that said, I'm willing. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to smite you. I'm willing to do that. But you got to remember that you asked me to do that. You got to remember you asked me to do that. You cannot curse me. And the soul said, I promise I will remember. And so that's what we're doing. And it's difficult. There were times when I, I was like, God, why is he still here? Why is he still alive? <laughs> but um, 
But that's what we're doing, you know, to the soul. This is a blip in the screen, but it's tough. It's tough from the perspective of these lifetimes. It really is. And I'm not minimizing that at all. I know what heaviness uh, feels like. But um, if you're looking at this video, uh, your video, your viewers, then they, they, they acknowledge they are in the vibration that they know to a certain level the beauty of who we all are. And I just want to encourage everyone to just recognize, I always tell people that there are parts of God that will not incarnate on this planet. They're like, no, you got racism, you got sexism, there's violence, there's poverty, there's abuse. Uh, I can't do it. I cannot do it. And so only the most courageous parts of God are willing to engage in this experience. And so by you being here, no matter where you are in your spiritual evolution, if you are here, if you are carrying a body, right? because we're not bodies carrying a soul, we're souls carrying a body. If you are here, you are courageous. Acknowledge your beauty. Acknowledge your courage for being here. Just for being here is incredible. So I love, I love you all. And I love you, Peggy. Thank you for having me. Uh, this has been amazing. When you said yes, I was like, I texted my <laughs> friend and I was like, I, I asked something and I'm freaking out. You know, sometimes <laughs> when you ask something, the universe is like, okay. And you're like, wait a minute, hold on. So uh, thank you so much uh, for allowing me to share this space with you. You're welcome. And I will see you in an hour and you're going to interview me on your show. So Anybody wants to see that, go to Loretta Sharing Group. <laughs> Loretta Sharing Group. I started out teaching the course uh, on the videos, and then I got tired of hearing myself talk, like some of y'all <laughs> tired of hearing me talk. Uh, and then I started saying, you know what, let me let me have some other people on and let's hear, let's hear their story. So yeah, please, please stop by the channel. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. All Loretta Sharon Group, uh, Facebook Loretta Sharon Group, Instagram Loretta underscore Sharon Group. Uh, but the biggest thing I want y'all to do is just look at the videos and and just, you know, be nourished and um, support Peggy. Peggy, listen, I know some people complain, but Peggy <laughs> is the truth, y'all. Peggy is the truth. You, there's nothing but heart. And I can't wait. For us to connect uh, on my show, Peggy, and okay. interview you. Okay. you. Uh -huh. I'll see you soon. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. Uh -huh.